back in three, two, one, go. Okay, so um, Traverso is a as I said, an indie game. The camera angle is kind of fixed, so um, it's kind of unique in that way that we have a 3D game with a fixed camera. And um, we were just in the beginning exploring a little bit the city, doing the tutorial as intended. But um, I'm going to go through a few uh, crucial mechanics that we're using. Like right now in the beginning, um, I'm buffering inputs to skip the first line of these dialogues and also to skip through the dialogue faster. Because this will, um, especially later, allow me to do a couple of things a little bit faster and we don't have to wait for certain triggers to activate. Oh, got stuck here. Um, so I should probably talk about the story a little bit because this game, uh, as unknown as it is, um, actually it's quite lovely. Um, it has these cute comic graphics, um, very nice art style and um, um, the setting is somewhat weird but also kind of cool. Um, as that we are in an underground world. Um, there's not a lot backstory in, in terms of what our world used to look like, but um, apparently the sun is dying and oxygen is running out, so all the people are now living in, in caves or like these underground magic places. And um, the rarest or like the most valuable material underground is uh, fresh air. So air is um, playing a huge role in this game. And we are playing this little girl that is uh, recruited to become a traverser. And uh, traversers are like the peacekeepers on the ground. And um, she's promised um, a, a great future. And our dad is really proud of us. And um, right now we are getting a gravity hook. Um, or like a gravity glove that allows us to move objects. That's like the big feature of a traverser. And so this this is our trial. So right here we're supposed to sneak past this guard, not get seen by the camera. Um, I think we did kind of poorly on that, but um, it doesn't matter. Just fine. I did just fine, yeah. <laughs> uh, the thing is these guards, they actually um, they shoot at you, but they cannot kill you. But um, it will slow you down, and if they catch you, like if they um, melee attack you, you actually die instantly. These robots right here, um, they also kill you instantly, but um, they have like a three second activation time. So um, they're kind of easy to dodge, and we just have to destroy them easily. So right here we're supposed to go into the like dungeon on the right, there's like the flip um, chart and we're we're skipping that entire tutorial part so we'll I'll get to that later when we actually have to use it but we can just use these boxes to block the laser that would instantly kill us run past the guard um, and be fine that's one of my favorite parts just clever use of like clever plays with all the boxes and you just go straight through the yeah. whole like still section so this is not quite portal level of physics abuse but um, we can do quite a lot of cool tricks with objects um, sadly, we cannot climb standing on objects, but um, we can do um, a few manipulations and like some some cool stuff that we are about to see here in a second. Um, and sadly, because this is an indie game, and I mean it's not uh, it's not quite portal level, but it's also really fun to play. Um, the physics are a little bit wonky, and um, this is uh, I'm gonna take my time here setting this up. We can jump on the chair, jump on the guard's head, hopefully. Oh, I'm gonna try it again. And then hopefully glitch on the table and then, nice. Jump over an invisible wall and skip. Pretty much the um, entire story element that tells us, okay, here's what happened. Our dad is in reality a spy and um, he's fighting for rebellion. So they have the theory that this big company that um, recruits us as a traverser is in fact um, stealing the ox oxygen and controlling it and um, yeah our dad is a re rebel and he gets kidnapped and we don't even we never learn about that in the speedrun so um, <laughs> we, the story is kind of lost in the speedrun just because of that one skip 
Okay, perfect. I was really worried about that. So it really looked like nothing, but there's one huge skip right here. Um, this purple head guy, we have to steal his money back. And if I do not trigger him before, um, while running down, um, I can actually just steal his back right here during the conversation. Um, if I if he sees me while I run down to speak um, to my Australian friend Gus down here, he will actually run around. It can take like two minutes to catch him. It's really annoying. He's super annoying. And here I'm doing a part of um, the next quest um, while we are in a conversation. Well, um, yeah, during a conversation you can't actually do much. I actually have a really hard time seeing because the monitor is quite dark, but I should be okay. Um, this is the um, Dr. Fess's dungeon. He has like this small experimental area and he wants us to get this thing. But um, he, he like forgot about his traps and he doesn't want to go down here. And um, so these three people that we are talking to are all rebel, um, not leaders, but like part of the rebel uh, union. And we're helping them, we're doing them a favor. And then they will help us find our dad again. Yeah, so here's Fester. He's in a wheelchair, poor guy. We're not gonna see him again. Um, but we're gonna clean out his yard and paint his out. I, I think the painting... Yeah, he says this is art. I think I did a really good job painting his house there. Definitely art. <laughs> Pure art. Uh, well, he didn't define like what colors he wanted. I think it I, I did well. Splash of blue, green, splash of blue, perfect. Perfect. Okay, and... <laughs> oh god, I got a hit by the oxygen. <laughs> so, um... You're wasting the precious oxygen. Yeah, the... The highest value to uh, element down here. So we're in the sewers now. Um, this is one of the longest areas in the game, of course. You can just toss it down here, and there's a 50 50 chance kind of of the bag staying on the trigger. Um, this is our escape from the overworld, and we're trying to um, get away from the guards and then get into a new area where we can deal with these um, evil people. Um, the evil people are called Raven Corps and then there's the Raven Guards. The, the people that talk weird and have the funny beaks on. We'll see more of them later. Um, here I'm doing a small setup. I'm just tossing the dynamite over to the left so I can one cycle it and kind of put the dynamite over here just in time for me to run over. Otherwise we would have to wait for the dynamite. And then this is a little bit tricky. Um, yep, I dropped it. Yeah, the, the actual controls when you're using the like the uh, telekinesis uh, style. Oh, saved it. Oh, saved it. Nice, saved nice. it. Nice. Okay, and there we go. <laughs> yeah, controlling those like controlling objects while moving them around like that can be really tricky. Yeah. So I'm controlling my character. Um, with with WASD, but only in eight directions, so forward, backwards, left, right, and diagonal. And then the objects are controlled with the mouse, but because we're in this weird top-down angle, but like diagonal, not really top-down, um, I have to adjust um, the, the orientation with the object. So right mouse button rotates, and then scroll wheel lifts and lowers objects. And it's sometimes hard to see. Like these pipes, for example, are on top of each other, even though it doesn't look like it. So I'm gonna attempt... Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time because it's kinda cool. I'm gonna attempt this trick right here where you can skip this puzzle by jumping. Oh, perfect. Nice. And landing on top of here. And usually you should stack um, boxes and then climb on top of those pipes and get rid of the toxic um, water on the bottom, but we don't we don't care about that. Ah, uh, that's... Uh, there's a good chance that I'm going to die here, because the cycle is kind of bad. A lot of small objects make it really hard to land on, control it. But I think we should be fine. going to play the safe. So this is also random, more or less random. I think it's on a global timer, so it depends how fast we do the last part. Oh, oh shame. <laughs> so and that's, uh, that's an example of um, not being able to see exactly where we, where we jump to. Um, just because of this weird camera angle. And as you can see right here, the uh, cycle kind of reset a little bit, making this a little bit faster and easier. Yeah, the objects are way better. Yeah. So even though I'm on a relatively tight estimate, um, I definitely expected one or two deaths in this run. 
Because um, even though this is somewhat of a child or like a teenager game with the story and the looks and everything and the puzzles are incredibly easy to figure out, um, the execution of the jumps, at least for the speedrun, are due to the wonky physics pretty hard. So here I just gotta wiggle some pipes and yeah, do some suggestions here, come on, go in there and then... <laughs> yeah, thi things just kind of snap into place. Yeah, they, yeah, the pipe orientation puzzle is awful if you do it casually and you don't know about the skip here. So I can just pick up a box, jump on the box and do only one half of the puzzle. And um, that allows me to go to, to this boss. Also, this is a memo and audio queue, and usually this guy should not be here, but uh, I think it should be fine. So I have a small setup for this boss fight, and um, I hope it goes well. So there's a, there's a way you can skip this boss fight, but it's, I want to say, a little bit um, tricky. Um, where you would bring two big boxes and then jump over the trigger, jump over this whole part. But you have to bring those boxes throughout the, like almost half the sewers, more than half the, of the sewers. And then you can jump on the boxes, climb around the boss trigger and just continue on. Yeah. Um, which is technically faster if you um, get really nice behaving boxes. But um, I did a couple of practice runs and it's, it's almost impossible. Like the boxes will always get stuck somewhere thanks to the physics. I don't want to blame the physics too much. As, as wonky and as frustrating as this game can be sometimes, it is incredibly fun. Um, both casually and, and as a speedrun. So right here he's doing four attacks and um, they can be different attacks. It can be uh, spit or, or this little blob. And we actually got lucky. Just gotta pay attention that I'm not jumping into the small hole between these pipes. And we should be good. So that was a boss fight. That actually went uh, quite well, really fast. That was pretty solid, yeah. Yeah. Um, you, so if you set up the dynamite in the beginning, just have it uh, nearby where you can just quickly grab it. Um, you can one cycle him and don't have to wait for the tentacles to attack again. And here we have to make sure to uh, open up this wall and this for some reason is super precise. Like uh, there's a huge hole but um, Valerie doesn't want to jump through there for some reason. And uh, so we escaped. That was the sewer. That was also probably the most um, walking intensive level so far. From now on we have a lot of um, um, smaller skips and a lot of cutscenes. Um, warning you guys. Uh, Giving you a little warning. Oh yeah, and so um, what we saw there is a safe boost, um, which is sadly random. Um, during a safe, if you're um, at the peak height or near the peak height of a jump while the game does a um, auto save, we actually get boosted forward quite far during the duration of the safe. And so here's the underworld. I'm gonna explain the story behind the underworld in a second, but here's a neat clip. And um, we can jump over this fence by climbing on this ticket machine. And we actually don't um, have to do the puzzles in this area. So the underworld is, um, yeah, it's hard to explain. It's like an upside down world. If you've watched um, Stranger Things, the TV show, um, there's like the upside down and it's similar. Except there's a direct connection um, and it's actually upside down. So. If we jump, if we fall down here, we would technically um, jump up to the other side. Okay, I have to actually do this because I c can barely see, but uh, we should be fine. Nice. Yeah, that's it's really hard to see here. Yeah, the monitor is a little bit dark, but I, I'll be fine. I'll be fine for now. Um, so yeah, there you you're supposed to move these boxes. I'm gonna take my sweet time here because these things kill you instantly. And then for the last one, you can just deactivate it. And um, that that was actually pretty good. I really didn't want to die there because then you have to do um, even more of these steam um, pistons again. So right here we're in, I think, the second or third longest cutscene of the game. Yeah, it's the third longest cutscene, which we sadly cannot skip. We can skip a few. Um, but um, here's the first time we actually learn that our dad, Linus, 
got kidnapped and here we learn that Edgar Foss, the guy that recruited us, is actually this evil mastermind who's removing our dad. Relocating, let's go with that. Relocating. Um, he may or may not be dead, we'll find out. And so Jacob Fisher is a uh, rebel spy who works for Foss. He's in here, we saw him for like half of a second. And um, we won't see him again. He's, yeah, that was all of what we see here in the speedrun of him. Gus, on the other hand, um, he's he's a great guy. <laughs> I don't want to talk um, bad stuff about Gus, but he's um, somewhat special. And then um, we'll find out why in just a second with the best cutscene in the game. And so he, he wants to bring us to the rebel base, and he doesn't tell us where the rebel base is, though. So this is a cutscene, and don't worry. I mean, I've complained about the dark monitor, but this is actually black, so I'm doing this in in complete darkness. And um, he gives us directions, but um, all I do is hold W and A and jump around. So I'm actually, if you if you were to locate um, yourself right now, I'm just in a small room, and all I can do is jump around in, in a circle and wait for this cutscene to be over. Let's get a move on. We need to hurry. It's a pretty solid concept for a cutscene. Yep. As it happens, just as we're as we're uh, in the dark, blinded, a volcano is erupting. Now we're <laughs> running for our life. All of this is obviously happening in real yeah, yeah. happening in real time, right here. That was too close for comfort, but we made it. Good work back there. Here, follow me inside. And we're done. So we've been in this room the entire time. So I position myself kind of at the stairs, so we can just go down here and okay. talk to Gus again. No! No. You can actually balance that on his head for a bit. It's kind of hard. <laughs> he doesn't mind, he's a friendly guy. Also you can see that I'm like straving a little bit in air. Um, Wiggling A and D. It, it doesn't really do much of a difference, but over the entire duration of the run, it kind of does help. And it also um, extends the time you're in air just by a brief, brief uh, fraction of a second. And um, that actually makes it more likely that if you hit a save point or an auto save, you get another boost. Because, as I said, those boosts are random. And so I kind of just want to trigger it as often as I can. Um, yeah, so uh, story update, um, we talked to Gus, who is now in charge of the rebel army and he wants us to break in into Foss's um, villa, mansion, and um, steal some important documents. So they're planning an uprising and obviously now everybody's against these rebels and we are now a known rebel, so all these guards that were Earlier, just trying to tickle us are now actually out to kill us. So I'm gonna, thankfully, for some reason, there's this box here. And, oh, well, that's not ideal. This is unfortunate. Yeah, I'm just gonna, oh, yeah, I'm just gonna let him hit me. Um, ideally, you would hit him with a box in his head and he gets stunned. That's how the guards work. Um, I say that's how they work because, as you saw there, uh, sometimes they just don't care. Ah, oh, there we go. So I hit him, and then I could steal the key and run past him. And otherwise you would have to wait for him to walk through the maze, and then wait for him at one point of the maze, and then sneak behind him in the maze and steal the key. Here's a really cool uh, puzzle, but when we know the door code, we just don't worry about the puzzle at all. Kind of loses, loses a bit of a charm, yeah. Yeah, it's sad. Like, this is probably the best puzzle in the game. There's, like, s different knights here, and each knight has a symbol, and then each symbol is associated with a value. Um, also, that tiny skip I did there saves going down the stairs, um, but it only really saves time if you get a first try. So here's another really long cutscene ahead. 
And um, I'm sorry for all these long cutscenes, but thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, this is the one cutscene in the game that we can just skip with escape. Stop yeah, just clapping, so it's perfect. Yeah. I'm sorry, I <laughs> didn't try to trick it. And um, yeah, we skipped this really long cutscene just to be in the longest cutscene of the game. So I'm just going to sit back and listen to Professor Cage because, um, yeah, as you can see, he's a self proclaimed genius and he has this amazing idea to escape here. Also, yeah, um, fun fact like, we rescued our dad, we found our, fan, our, our dad, sorry, and. Um, yeah, it was a trap, and I actually don't know what happens to our dad after that. Like, he got... Well, he disappeared, he got relocated, but I think now he really disappeared. Because we don't see him anymore, so... Who knows? Probably just went home, just chilling. It's chilling, fine. yeah, he's probably fine. I bet he's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, so here's Stacy. Um, Professor Cage's uh, greatest invention. And Daisy uh, decides he, she likes us more than him, and so she's gonna open our door. Here's um, the option to save Cage. Um, he's such a nice guy, we could actually save him, but um, because this is a speedrun, um, it saves 0.25 seconds to not save him. So I might as well just uh, run straight down instead of running to the right, just one one jump and take his um, open his door as well. It doesn't make a difference, so. I don't care too much about him. I'm gonna play the safe. Um, this is a really hard sneaking sequence. You're supposed to sneak past all of these and these lasers kill you, but if you take the box and jump on top of the box, uh, well, <laughs> the laser can't touch you. Boxes are very good in this game. Yeah. So I've run this game um, at a different live marathon, uh, BSG, the Benelux speedrun gathering in, in the Netherlands. And um, for the very first time, this was live, and it happened once there and never again, where I jumped over the laser and I actually died. I kept dying to the laser and I had no idea why. And to this day, I have no idea why. So this can work. Oh no, I got the glitchy box again. So for some reason, sometimes this box likes to jump around. Okay, so we missed this uh, laser by just one pixel. It's really hard to set up because this is so hard and we're we're skipping these two mirrors right here we're going directly through here and um if i get it first time it actually saves a good amount of time here and these lasers are way too precise for how how hard they are to control sadly okay and so we solved this super hard puzzle again the puzzles in this game are are somewhat easy somewhat for you know the younger audience and then all the boss fights and the fight scenes are super hectic and fast paced and uh, yeah also this laser actually damages you so the damage system in here is like the good old call of duty way of uh, having health displayed your health drops down and then your your screen goes red but if you just stand still or like walk away for like five seconds without taking damage you're perfectly fine again just like in real life. <coughs> Just like in real life. I'm gonna do a small save for your strat right here. Um, this guard should absolutely not bother us. But we can just stun him with this box and then... Yeah, he's gonna stay in this room instead of follow us behind this door. Because um, I want him to not follow us, so I'm just gonna make sure. Slippery floor. He actually respects that. He's not gonna go through here now. So I n need this. Hey, I need this box, thank you, to, the same, to do the same thing here, so I'm saving a sneaking sequence. Okay, that was close, but it worked. And yeah, so this guard is going to shoot at us, but he's going to be too slow. Um, next part of this puzzle, also super hard to figure out. You just remove this battery and you can run through this laser. <laughs> yeah. Actually, knocking out the guards with those boxes can be... Uh it can be pretty pretty wonky. Again, the uh, <laughs> controlling objects, well, with yeah. the uh, like little laser arm, it's... I'm uh, oh my god, where did he come from? What? <laughs> he was waiting for you. He was waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna get you this time. You talk, you talk shit about him, now he's mad. I was gonna say, like, uh, during practice something happened to this door, where this door just disappeared and never, like, reappeared. I was gonna say, if this happens again, I can say, this never happened before. 
Um, but now I get to say it about that guard. I've never seen that guard spawn there before. He's committed. He he was really out for me. You think not this time. Um, so here's this super complex, actually the most complex puzzle in this game. So we learned about a f certain elements, these energy beams, and you're supposed to pick up these energy bolts into these four mirrors on the outside and then activate a laser. But sadly, um, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to jump over the wall. That's, uh, that's the benefit of the physics in this game. So um, here's a new element that is usually introduced in the tutorial. So if we have this barrel, uh, we can actually put it on top of our head and we can sneak past guards and through lasers. But um, the same the same properties of the barrels get applied if I just carry it in my hand, which allows me to jump or like walk a little bit faster around. And then um, I can just do the sequence a lot faster than sneaking with the barrel. Also, you may notice that the first time he went through the lasers, he didn't actually have the barrel on top of his head. Yeah. He, just, he just carried it behind him and for some reason that's okay. Yeah, so the laser instant kills you, but um, as long as you carry the box, it's just... Yeah, I guess the game the game thinks you, you have the box on your head because the properties get applied. Yeah. But um, um, yeah, it, it allows me to move a little bit faster. It's not actually like crucial to do it. You can just put the box on. Um, but it makes the climb be What? <laughs> Wait, okay, I need to set this up again. Again, it's uh, it's somewhat hard to see, but I, I didn't even realize that you can fall down there in, in between the elevator and the, and the gap here. So, okay. <laughs> We're fine now. Um, yeah, maybe another story update, because um, due to the skips and the fast stuff we do, um, we stole the items, we got trapped, we escaped the trap, um, or the prison, and now we're actually, um, we were contacted by Gus, that uh, his super machine, the roboter um, that he introduced us to, the mech, actually got stolen um, by Foss, and now we're going back to Foss and Gus for the final showdown, and we're gonna fight him. And uh, this super duper machine, because apparently this little, I don't know how old she is, 12, 14 year old girl is the only character that can stop uh, a massive mech. Classic JRPG style. Yeah. Um, so this is a small shortcut. You're just supposed to go around this. Oh, that's the sh Oh, oh, oh okay. Nice. Wow, I was worried about not making that jump because I jumped off a little bit early, but I landed on the fence. So again, you're supposed to um, jump with a moving box there, and if you just not bother. Although some of these plates, or like a lot of these plates, explode you. But if you know exactly which ones, it's always the same ones. You can just jump to them and quickly solve the puzzle here. And um, so yeah, we're on our way to the final boss fight. We're almost done with the game already. And uh actually went quite well. We had like two two deaths so far. I'm always jinxing this. Um the real run killer sadly is the final stage of the boss fight. Which um if you die there um makes you do the entire boss fight again and the boss fight is like three or four minutes. Yeah, um we're we're good on time right now, um, for the estimate. But if I die to the boss once we might already get in trouble if I die twice. It's just embarrassing and uh, really hard. But um, hard to come back from that. Let's just hope and um, I'll, I'll try my best. Sure, it'll be fine. Yeah, I'll pray, s I'll, I'll pray to RNG Jesus. Yeah, and um, I'll explain the RNG part of, of the run in a second. So overall, there's there's actually not a lot of RNG. Um, the puzzles are always consistent and the guard movement is more or less consistent and um, just like these fights like the boss battle is somewhat random and um, yeah oh this might this might be terrible <laughs> um, yeah so um, I uh, the first phase is straightforward we're just gonna throw three dynamites or rockets at him and then he's gonna charge us he's gonna do a charge attack that's a rocket 
and just grabbing that. He's gonna throw it at us. Um, and then he's gonna do a charge attack. After the first phase, he's gonna start spawning some small robots that we need to dodge. That's still not bad, and we have to do this for all four pillars. And I like to like bait these a little bit, like just have them explode. Um, so while I wait here, they can actually come towards me and get dangerously close. Um, the boss has four different attacks, but as long as I'm moving around in a certain pattern, he's doing two of the ta two of the attacks that I want him to do most of the time: the rockets and the and the dynamite. If I were to stand still, he would use a grappling hook, and that animation takes 15 seconds, I think. And if I get too close to him, he's doing a stomp attack, and that can also take a really long time, depending on where he does it. And so after three or four, or after both um, phases, he will do this stomp attack. But if you jump at the perfect time, it actually deals no damage. And I think the stomp attack is the only one that doesn't kill you instantly. Um, the dynamite and the rockets are proximity based, so if you're um, lucky... What? what? Okay, well he charged it and he didn't break it, so I need to charge him away. And now he has to charge again. That was a little bit weird. Just kind of hug the pillar and everything goes fine. Yeah. But it's fine. So we're in the last phase and now I need to focus because now we have these random rocks that are falling from the ceiling. And there should be a shadow on the floor that is warning me for like half a second. Um, but um, I can't see them. So this is all oh, hoping. Luck. Uh, okay, I should be okay now. Uh, there's a little bit of dark floor here. Okay, so he's gonna charge the door now. Jump out of the way, and yeah, we're all good. Nice. Whew. That was also um, not the fastest, but a really, really good boss fight. So, except for the one charge, he actually behaved quite nicely. He didn't do any unnecessary attacks. And then get ready on time. Time. <laughs> nice. So, uh, yeah, that's Traverser. And um, there's just. For the story update, we're gonna have this small update. Um, it turns out that there, uh, we're tr going back to the overworld, like the old Earth, and we're gonna see that there's actually plenty of oxygen on the surface, even though we've always been told that the last oxygen is under Earth. And well, yeah, it's just a, it's a really nice game. I hope more people maybe pick it up, not just to run it, just to experience it casually. It's Probably four hours casually. It's not that long. Yeah, it's, not, it's not a long game. Yeah, but it's 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 just quite neat and quite unique, I would say. So yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for having me. And thank you, Spat. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> for I your great for your great, great thank commentary. You. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah.
Okay, Moment. Uh, yeah, also ich bin jetzt live, gut, dann uh, hello everyone. <laughs> My name is Eidgott and today I will be running Tomb Raider 3 any percent. Uh, next to me, you can see him here, is Mesh. Hey. He is not a <laughs> technically a Tomb Raider 3 runner, yeah. but he will try to help I out in some parts. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's start. Uh, start the timer in three, two, one, go.